Ching Ching ordering Disney masks for Hawaii. All right, Disney Are... masks. Oh well, that's because you have the. They have the uh, what's it called? The fabric pre-printed. All right. Yep. And here we go. Okay, hold on. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, hold on. Forgive me for waiting this long to ask. What's this show about anyway? Who knows? And it's probably totally random. Can we discuss what's going on? And welcome, everybody, to another edition of PTR Radio here on the fabulous interweb. Uh, thank you very much to McKenna Severn for that uh, wonderful intro song. And if you would like to write us an intro song, perform it, uh, feel free to send it in. Shaggy at PTR Radio, show at PTR Radio. Uh, you know, any of those, we'll be happy to take your submissions. You know, this could kick off a whole new wave of competition for who can do the best PTR radio intro song. That would be a great thing for us to hear. Uh, Whether we get it or not, who knows? But that would be extremely fun, I think. So, you know, who knows? It it could happen. Uh, (laughs) Why not? Why not? Why not? The worst thing we can do is ask for something and not get it. You know? We'll just see what the heck happens. That's the story of my life, man. Yeah. Pretty much. I asked for no shenanigans during this silly season election cycle, and God said, oh, yeah, hold my beer. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, uh, Rote, (laughs) come on. I got a seat for you. Come on. I mean, it is. That, oh God, it's it, it's a bit crazy. It, it's a bit nuts. I, and that's my, all I'm going to say about that. I mean, because... we had we had a staff meeting the other day, and <laughs> of course they they ask us what do you like best about working from home? Because this is the first time that I remember the the state, which is where I work, saying, "Hey, everybody, work from home." It's it's the first time it's ever really been offered. To regular state employees, occasionally you'll get a contractor who who can work from wherever their location is. But the first time full time employees have been said, "Hey, why don't you guys work from home?" And uh, so I had a list 
a pretty decent list of things that I like about working from home. And uh, a bagpipe intro would be great. If we had a bagpipe intro, I don't know, maybe we could get Sir Sean Connery to sing for us in a bagpipe intro. It could happen. It could happen. Uh, But, you know, so my my biggest thing that I liked, my number one thing, and this actually made it into our meeting because they grabbed a couple of them from the submissions was I said, I don't have to compete for the bathroom. Because we have two toilets and two urinals for the entire floor of men. All right. And I added on to that, if someone makes a mess in the bathroom, I know who it was. I don't have to play amateur Sherlock Holmes to figure out who can't hit a urinal. Okay. You know, because it was a daily occurrence to walk back into the our little super cube and go, they did it again. They either overestimated their size or they underestimated their flow rate. One of the two, but it resulted in a yellow pond. <laughs> so uh you know sometimes sometimes i have to yeah see okay bagpipers now, are weird. it just needs more is... cowbell <laughs> so you know i you know what <laughs> dave we're we're waiting for an uh an acdc cover we'll we'll take an so, acdc here we go <clears throat> you know this is what i think PTO dave radio? i think I think Dave should do a kazoo oh. slash Casio keyboard slash cowbell, cowbell version. Maybe us. with a slide whistle and in there. Kevin can do the bagpipe mm-hmm. intro. And then I will mix them into a club <laughs> format. <laughs> complete with Sean Connery rap. It could be one of the most. Epic and then what we're going to do, then I'm going to, then I'm going to have, I'm going to take some of the, the vocals from Kenna's version. Yeah. And she's going to be like the Fergalicious of the yeah. PTR black eyed peas yeah, we could club win. mix that I'm doing here. You know, we could win a Grammy next year. There's not that much competition. I think we could probably do it. And thankfully, Shit's Creek got canceled. So if it becomes a theme song, yeah, then we could win an Emmy. Mm-hmm. Now that Shit's Creek is is ending, because apparently they they're like the Meryl Streep of the Emmys this year, because they won every <laughs> damn thing. Yes, they did. Yeah. Uh, so you know, when, when, McK- when we came up with the idea of asking McKenna to create a theme song, I, I didn't quite think that we we come up with the idea of that the theme song for a probably totally random show should be itself completely random of which one it is. That's oh. true. I mean, so I'll probably have to start up. So if, if we do get more submissions of theme songs, we'll probably have to uh, create a randomizer function to randomly pick which one we play. Well, yeah, we'll be because... just like, if we get enough, we'll start a radio station of nothing but our theme songs. You know, why not? I... We're going, well, I... we're going big time on this. So, Anyway, but let's get what more than one show? first. Was it was it Weeds that after the first season they just had every episode had a different cover of the the Tiny Boxes song, I think. Was that Weeds? Uh, I don't know. I, I it might have been. There. I never watched it. So. Yeah, me neither. Does that <laughs> Does that make you ape I am? <laughs> You know, hey. maybe. I don't know. I don't know either. I got to try. Let me see if I can find something because I was, um, you know, since I'm here, I'm able to multitask. So today, and I wish I had the stack, but I don't. I went through because you guys remember back in the day when the only option to back up your data was CDs. Okay. So, you know, when you wanted to make sure that you all your documents were safe. 
you would burn CDs with your documents and your pictures and everything else on them. I mean, back in the day, we didn't have thumb drives. So I have been, I've, I've had these stacks and stacks of CDs. You know, like, <clears throat> this one, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing but data, my old data that I don't know if I need anymore or not, but it's taking up room on my shelf because I'm a hoarder. I'm a digital hoarder. But why have the CDs and DVDs around? I don't need that. I have hard drive space now. I mean, it used to be. The cloud. Yeah. I so, mean, that, you, can, you, can, you can use free cloud for that much storage. So, you know. <clears throat> so I, I broke out the CD DVD drive that everybody on a technology YouTube channel says you don't need anymore, which I don't quite understand because, well, you, I obviously still have a need for it. And I started pulling data off of CDs and DVDs. And, you know, I found PTR radio episodes going back to 2003 on those discs. Uh, in fact, I found, I found the eight man cometh episodes that I had burned off. And I found a lot of other interesting tidbits in some of those CDs and DVDs. Oh, uh, you know, like I found the original Colin show from January 24th, 2005. Uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> that long. And, uh, uh, you know, I've just all this stuff stuff that now at least it's just taking up space on a hard drive rather than on my shelf but it's just it's amazing how much garbage you accumulate in you know old email boxes backups and, and everything it's just old projects if i said labs colin would laugh because he knows what i'm talking about uh an old endeavor That's that we trip used, out yeah <laughs> an old endeavor that we were going down uh so you know <laughs> very very old stuff uh but that's that was one of the things that i spent time doing today was yeah. just uh, now, archiving I, old dvds and cds so um so you, we were talking about uh i discovered i realized i was muted uh so we're talking about working from home mm -hmm. and so i i'd say that one of my annoyances are People set um, out of office things when they first left the office back in winter. Oh yeah, and I'm finding that extremely annoying because now I'm like, okay, you're not responding to my emails, and but I don't know if you're out of off. You know, are you actually away from the office? Are you on like a staycation or a vacation? Um, or are you just, you know, busy in meetings or something? I can't yeah. tell the difference because all I get from your email is, is that you're out of the office starting in May. Yeah. I, I got, I got, I, I get a bit upset at that too. And Mike probably has a different perspective of than, than we do of that because, you know, Hey, been work from home forever. Uh, you know, but for us, it's it's new. And for a lot of the people that we work with, it's new. So they don't quite get it yet. Right. Uh, you have to so, understand the office has moved. So you're in office when you're at home. Yeah. So we had we actually had like guidance memos and, you know, recommendations come out explaining all of this. The the upshot is a lot of the folks were already utilizing Skype as your primary phone mm -hmm. source, if you will. So logging on from home, working from home, whatever, your phone number, contact info doesn't change at all. Right. Um, the phone lines in the office, the folks that actually were going in, I believe those were able to be forwarded. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, we were kind of prepared. The out of office thing, they gave us guidance on how to code our time, um, which because that changes. Uh, you have to, and in fact, I'm I'm just realizing that I got to go in and I have to um, 
I have to go and update some stuff. Um, but yeah, that it's a little different, but it's also very corporate. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, Shaggy, you're working for the state. So it's a fair assumption that most of your employees at least live in the state. <laughs> well, yeah, see, and that's actually, that brings up a good point. Cause somebody I know is actually selling their house here in town and they're moving to Missouri. And they're like, well, there's nothing in the contract that says that I have to live in the state. I'm like, you know what? You are absolutely right. There's nothing in the contract right now that says that you have to live in the state. There's also nothing in the contract right now that says that we can even work from home. This is an emergency situation. There are no there's there's nothing in here that says that we can work from home. I said, so th and the contract will be up for renewal coming up here fairly shortly. Uh, and so if this is a continuing thing where we're working from home, you can bet the state will put in a writer somewhere that will say you have to live in the state to work for the state. Now, whether people can be grandfathered in or whatever doesn't matter. I said, but because the city already has a law like that, where if you want to be a city employee, you have to live within the city. And it makes yeah. sense. I mean, we do have people that commute from, you know, edge parts of the state into into the city to work um uh, but uh you know i'm like you know it just kind of seems a little bit dangerous to sell your primary residence here move to another state and just expect that you'll be able to ride out till retirement working from home now granted this person's only got like two or three years left till retirement but that's betting the farm on a lot and i actually asked them i'm like well what will you do if they say okay everybody All's clear, you know, vaccine, 100 percent, no problems. Everybody back to work come, you know, February. And they said, well, I guess we'll have to get an apartment. A after you've already bought a house in another state. Boy, short sighted. Well, no, actually, it's funny you say that because there was a time where Kim and I were talking about it, that in order to wor work in an area that I would be allowed to work in, like up in Maine, I would get a, a studio apartment that I would stay at in, during the week while Kim stayed back at the house kind of thing. Oh, see, that'd never fly with me and my wife. Well, never fly. That was, that was a discussion at one point, but yeah, that has changed. Yeah. Now, Shaggy, I just... I don't think the state – the situation is not really the same between the state and the city. Well – and, and the reason for that is, is that the city gets most of its direct money from property taxes. So they want you to live inside the city and use city services and pay city property tax. The state is primarily paid with income tax, and they tax whatever income you earn within the state. Right, but your income tax, is that not dependent upon where you live? No. Your income tax Cause... is you're going to be paying Illinois income tax. If you live somewhere else and wherever you live taxes you at a higher rate than Illinois does, then you have to pay the difference to the state you live in. But if the state you live in has less income tax than Illinois, then you just pay income tax to Illinois. That's the same thing, vice versa, if you're working outside the state of Illinois but live in Illinois. Because I, I just saw an article uh, about Google, Facebook, Amazon, et cetera, where they have work-from-home employees who are moving away from Silicon Valley, okay? Uh -huh. Where they are moving to, frankly, cheaper parts of the country to live uh, because yep. they've been told you can live wherever you want – uh, you're going to be able to work from home forever. And yes. initially, there was no talk of, of salary differences based upon it. But now the companies have come out and said, wait a second, uh, if you move to a lower cost of living location, we're going to reduce your pay rate to be uh, equivalent to where you're living not the job you're performing within our organization. Right. That's not income tax. That's property taxes. Well, uh, how much does milk well, cost? Well, but they said uh, they, they actually said that part of it has to do with the taxation 
being and the reason why they said is they said that that the the people had to report where they were living because there is a tax uh uh fallout for it for the That's company true. Yes, yes, but it, it I, depends. Does the company have a presence in those states? So your your friend there who's living in Missouri, there's a question there of because they're working in Missouri, are they, are they, but they're working, I think it has to do with a you know, presence of where, the, does the company you're working for have a presence in that other state or that other city? The, Illinois does not have a presence in Missouri, so therefore you're moving no. Illinois in Illinois. No, that's the whole reason why uh, people are moving to Missouri is because there's no Illinois yeah, now, presence. Now, there are city income taxes um, in some places. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure Springfield, where we live, does not have an income tax. I don't know about Chicago. Yeah, so I'm not. I'm not sure either. But so, uh, listen, you guys actually came up in a conversation last night or this weekend with uh, between Kim and I, because apparently there is something on the November ballot in Illinois that could affect pretty much every person with a job in Illinois. Uh, you must be talking about the what they're calling the fair tax amendment, probably, I guess. That where yeah, that, your your tax bracket goes up with the more money you make or your percentage yeah. goes up. Yeah. So right now, a, aka New Jersey. Yeah. So right now, Illinois is a flat tax for, across right. the board, right? And they're saying, yes. and I'm just I'm not going to pretend to be a tax lawyer or tell anybody what to think. I'm just going to say what the arguments are for and against. Okay. Um, one side is saying this is disproportional to the lower income crowd because it means that the rich people who can afford to pay more taxes are not paying more taxes that the you know that the poor believe they should and by passing this amendment it'll give the legislature the ability to tax the rich more so and there the argument here is that it would only affect people who make more than couples who make more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year otherwise you could potentially depending upon your income see a reduction in your taxes or they would be the same. Now, uh, if they were to implement it exactly that way, I can tell you that if they if they implemented it exactly as they're saying and with no modifications, that is pretty much accurate fact. And the only reason I know it and I can say that is because I built the damn website that's the calculator that tells people. So if they implement it 100% the way that they're currently advertising it, that's actually true. All right? Now, that never happens, so just forget that, all right? Um, now, on the other coin, the other side of the coin, they're saying, well, no, because this will just allow them to raise everyone's taxes across the board, the poor people and the rich people, and the poor people won't have as much money. They'll get taxed more, and so it's going to affect everybody. So that's your arguments for both sides. Oh, wait, that, okay. The argument on the other side isn't quite correct there, Shaggy. Mm -hmm. The argument from the other side is because this amendment, constitutional amendment change says that basically it says they can now pass laws to do taxes on anything they want for any reason. So the naysayers are coming up with the they're going to take this law and say that, oh, you're a retiree. Oh, OK, instead of taxing your uh, retirement fund at the same rate as, you know, a young person, we're going to take, oh, we're going to make it 100 percent. I mean, to, to look yeah. at the, our, the the ads coming out. Yeah. These politicians are going to take this law and 100 uh, percent tax all of your uh, retirement income. So you're going to be forced to leave the state. That, yeah, that's, that, what, that's what the ad say. That's what the old lady in the ad says. Yes. She says that yes. if it passes, she's going to have to leave the state, which is one of the dumbest things to do because retirees actually make less money if they leave the state, because then you have to pay income tax in the state that you're moving to. So uh, you live on the mountain in Tennessee, in which pay, you're not yeah. paying income tax. That's, yeah. that's you know, but that was the reason what, for that. What, what you do? That's like, dude. <laughs> you just pulled that's like Beetlejuice. You just <laughs> so 
Uh, but, Come on now. But in general, yeah. So that's the whole that's the whole gimmick there. So listen, yeah, it it, it, is, it, it is a thing on the bill. Yes. Can and and we can haven't we made please a, get to the drink. We haven't made a drink z- yet. Scenario here. Yeah. Well, we we okay. should probably make a drink. Um. Yeah. So, but to make a drink, we got to go to the bar first. Go to the bar because we can't go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Shaggy's gonna go to the bar. Oh my. God. Speak up. We can't hear you. Ain't that funny as hell. Go back to your microphone. We can't hear you. <laughs> this is classic. Yes. He ran so, a wire specifically to make sure that he, we could no, hear him. I, well, I made a wire so, so that I hear, hear you. But he uh, forgot to for turn some reason. the wireless microphone receiver on, apparently. No, it, that's on. That is on. So the question is, why isn't it coming in? All right. Uh, well, check, I can hear one, you two. now. So one, two. Check, check. Well, hold on. Yep. You ever watch that Red okay. Green show on uh, PBS? <laughs> you you could you could have you could have insert any title into that. And the answer would be no. Well, a Canadian show that was kind of like um, Home Improvement is, is a mentality. But they had this bit okay. where this guy, I can't remember his name, but he was like doing something, but it was all silent. So somebody else was just narrating him doing it. So I was okay. saying, you know, Shay could have started making a drink and we could have narrated him doing it. That's true. So kind of like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 type bartending. Or Ozzy okay. Man. There Ooh. we go. Could have been Ozzy Man reviewing yeah, Shaggy bartending. Okay. Now you can hear me. I hope. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, great. Uh, well, let's do this again. <laughs> Welcome. Today we're going to be making a Tom Collins. Tom Collins is actually pretty easy to make. You just need a few things. First, gin. Second, club soda. Third, fresh lime juice. And I do recommend fresh. I made this from the stuff in the bottle. Not so great. Uh, Then, simple syrup. You can find a recipe to make this. It's dead simple. Okay, tall glass, Let's see here, oh yep, so first things first, you need two ounces of gin, I have no idea what the guys are, are doing other than laughing at me, we're not laughing at you, holding up funny signs, we're not going to laugh at you, Two ounces gin. Then you break into your mason jar. You need one ounce simple syrup. Half ounce fresh squeezed lemon juice. Okay, then we just need our ice. Uh, yes, Mike? Um, so, Boogsy is wondering why it's not called the Shaggy Collins. 
<laughs> just add a splash of monkey paw. Once you've got your ice in there, then you're going to fill up, or about three quarters, with just some simple club soda. Stir. And that's it. That simple. And how is it? Actually, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. So now... I didn't make that. <laughs> All right. What'd you make, Mike? Well, since I don't have my wireless microphone set up and I don't have webcams and everything and I have animals everywhere, uh, I pre-made my drink. Mm -hmm. And it was based off of what I had available. And I'm going... I have, I have not yet tasted it. Okay. So... This is dangerous. essentially, um, I'm going to call it a, a a drunken mocha because it's a shot of uh, bird dog chocolate whiskey and a shot of uh, Hiram Walker's coffee brandy. Okay. And it's actually not terrible. All right. Um, over ice. And that's it. Just stir it up. And it's been sitting here for about a half hour. So it's kind of watered down a little bit, which tends to work when you're talking about bird dog chocolate whiskey. Uh, a little bit of water does not hurt. It's actually, it actually, it's, it's actually quite tasty. All right. And that completes tonight. Mixing cocktails with PTR Radio. Now, back to the studio. I'll tell you what. You want to impress me? You want to impress me? Mm -hmm. Next time you have our pictures on some of those monitors there. <laughs> so it actually looks like we're getting mixed in somewhere in the entire interweb. <laughs> there you go. Overproduce that, you bastard. There. Um, so as I saw something, uh, the Blair sweatshop is Etsy complete. The all, Everybody's got a store now. Um, yep. What is it? Something in brew? So in brew? I think is that would <sighs> That's fine. Everybody can have an Etsy. It's cool. Oh. So uh, I have a present for you, Shaggy. Okay. Yep. Not sure what I'm gonna get it to you, but <laughs> it's a uh green hoodie. Oh sweet. Sweet. That'll be nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's nice. What you, you drank a Zima? What's that? No, it's a um, Sprec, Sprecker um, sparkling water orange. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, you know what would get good in there? Some vodka. Vodka. Yeah, so I pre-made uh, this last night, and actually the wife was pretty happy with the results. So this uh, this used to be her main drink. So she was happy that we chose it for this week. So I really wasn't planning on drinking anything hard tonight, but <laughs> I... So did I tell you... That the house next door finally went up for sale. No, did you buy it? You gonna flip it? No, no. You sure? You could. You you don't have no. a lot to do. You got time on your no. hands. No. It's just, the thought of having neighbors again. 
this makes me realize how quickly we need to get out of Jersey because the fact that somebody's going to live that close to me uh, it just kind of skews me out now. Yeah. After having that house sitting vacant for so long. Mm hmm. Well, our neighbors for the last few months have been not only our regular neighbor, but also her construction company. Uh, because her construction company seems to oh. not be able to get anything done. So, uh, <laughs> so Kate Leslie Construction, don't ever hire them unless you need a roommate. Uh, because they've been there for probably six months. It started with a bathroom remodel. And then they had to take down some wallpaper in her bedroom. And now they're taking down a popcorn ceiling in her living room. But six months for those three projects. It's a bit excessive, even by my standards. Well, I'm wondering, it, does any of it have to do with the fact that you can't get materials? No. No, because okay. everybody else is working. I mean, there's a, there's plenty of other companies that are working. Okay. Because I'll tell you something, I've had three three orders canceled by Lowe's to have fence panels delivered. Well, I'm starting to get pretty mad about this. And these new neighbors move in. They, they if they I, uh, steal my, their fence panels. Just have to, hmm? Steal their fence panels if they order any and get them delivered. My, no, it's the fence between our properties. And then just but tell if them. that guy doesn't want to like let me in to to actually put up the new panels. Well, what you do is you introduce yourself on the first day that they show up. And you just go, hi, I'm Mike the Ape Man. You might have heard of me from my internationally known podcast. Somehow I don't think that's going to work. Well, it may. You could strike up a conversation. He could say, oh, my God, you're that Mike the Ape Man? I, how, did I, how did I not know this? No, Honey, listen, our, this could, our house is listen, worth a whole lot more. We're next to a celebrity. This, this, it could backfire horribly. Oh, he, he might know the Mike the Ape Man from the NHB days. Oh, that Mike the Ape right? Man. Oh, wait, a second, wait a second. Wait a second. I left, clips, but I come back. <laughs> those clips are still in their automation. Oh, jeez. I think you should send a cease and desist letter. I thought I did. <laughs> or, or at least ask for royalties. PTR is on royalties and nothing from nothing the nothing. PTR is still got clips in there. I don't get it. I don't know. Well, because right, let's... such a lack of information. But anyway. All right. So let's talk about something uplifting. Um, boobs. <laughs> booze. Boobs. Boobs. So are we talking about the French? No, we're talking about Candace Cameron Bure. Oh, okay. I thought we were going to talk about the French first, but I'm all about talking about Candace Cameron Bure. You know, normally when we'd say, hey, we were going to talk about Candace Cameron Bure, we'd say, can you believe how many Christmas movies she's in this year? I mean, that would be the next part of our statement. You know, it's true. Or, hey, it looks like Fuller House got a, a, a renew, right? That would be normally what we would say. But that's not what we're going to say. We're going to say that Candace Cameron Bure shocked her Twitter followers or her Instagram followers. Now, let us let us just refresh your memory. Candace Cameron Bure, a.k.a. DJ Tanner from Full House, is Kirk Cameron's younger sister. Yeah. Kirk Cameron being the religious zealot that destroyed Growing Pains and went on to make <laughs> 700 Left Behind movies. <laughs> 701. So Candace <laughs> is also religious. Therefore, a lot of her followers are religious. Yeah. I don't know how religious she is. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure she's semi-religious. I just don't know how religious. Eh, maybe, but not as bad as Kirk, I'm willing to bet. 
Yeah, I'm I'm willing to bet that too. So, so are you going to put the picture up? Yes, I am. I am so just are, uh, I'm yes. getting the full picture right now. Uh, oh, damn it, that's not what and I wanted. She is married to the image. Uh, Val Val Bure, who now is the younger brother of Pavel Bure, who and they are both famous now, hockey players. It is important to note that they have been married for some time, right, Mike? Uh, yes. So th she posted this picture on her Instagram feed. All right. This is her and her husband standing on a bridge, and he has her arm around. She is in front of him. He has her arm around her, clutching onto her right boob. All right. Getting ready to play a little tune in Tokyo. All right. Now, if you're too young to know what that is, go watch the movie. Girls just want to have fun. All right. Uh, but regardless, she got a lot of soccer mom hate from this photo. All right. Oh, yeah. They did not like that she was showcasing the objectification of women. And that she would let her husband touch her in such an inappropriate way. Now, to her and credit, share it with the world. Yeah. Now, to her credit, Mrs. Cameron, Candace Cameron Bure, had a great retort to those people, which was, of course, I let him touch me this way. In fact, I hope that he does. This is what a healthy, good marriage and relationship is all about. He can touch me anytime he wants. Well, good for you, Mrs. Candon, Candace Cameron Bure, because you are 100% absolutely right. And if I was married to you, I would grab your boobies all the time because they are proud boobies. <laughs> Eventually, she'd be like, God, listen, you are a grown man. Stop trying to breastfeed <laughs> off of me. <laughs> You are not Homelander, you <laughs> sick bastard. But she's absolutely right. I mean, can we can we agree that she's absolutely right? She is. That there's well, there's uh, nothing. Okay. Her, her husband and her have been married for I think twenty four years. So there's, I have two. I have two opinions on this. The first one is, all these Karens need to grow up and just look. They're married. That being said. I do understand why maybe you don't want to put that particular picture out there on Instagram. You know what? I know why the Karens are complaining about this on Instagram. Because their husbands ain't chasing their fat asses around the bedroom trying to get their hands on them. Well, because this kind of ties into another one that you posted ain't up. trying. Oh, that. All right. And I'm not saying that you have to look like Mrs. Candace Cameron Bure to have your man reach out and grab you. All right. Let, you can well, look like the yellow wait pages. That's wait fine. A second. We're happy with that. You can have more You're... of a pear shape. All right. Sir Mixlot said it best. All right. There ain't nothing wrong with a big butt. All right. So. I don't think that was a line in the song. Well, it was. I'm paraphrasing. I don't want to be accused of social appropriation, uh, but you know, there, there's nothing wrong with it. It's all in how you carry it, how you feel about yourself. It's all about self-image. All right. If you are comfortable with yourself, and and your hubby's comfortable with you the way you are, then there ain't. You know, there ain't nothing wrong with it. Little smack on the ass as you walk through the kitchen is a good thing. And I bet Mama Blair but would agree with me on this one. You don't have to put this on Instagram. I'm not. I, you know what? I kind of agree with you. But I also think that it's a positive thing to show good uh, a good working relationship on Instagram. Because it's not just flowers delivered to you at work. A good, healthy, that. active relationship is a little bit of touchy-feely, you know, 
swat them as they go by. <laughs> Hang in trouble. So I'm sorry, I read that. I read that and all I had was the, the little dude from Little Giants in my head. <laughs> the woman who had the snot bubble just be Don't be talking about my mama. So I mean, but that is a it's 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 a it's it's a perfectly healthy, happy, natural yes, thing. It is, but but I sort of had this discussion with somebody earlier this week that not everything needs to be out there on social media. No, not everything. But what's I wrong get with it, it that you you have a healthy relationship with your husband, and yes, you may be physically viable. You may be knocking the boots quite often, but the whole world don't need to know it. Okay, but let's put this in context, Mike. She has 10,000 posts on Instagram about her mm-hmm. Christmas movies. All right? Yes. She has one picture of her husband grabbing her boob. Okay. She's not so, posting her sex video online. All right? But 10,000 people are following her, or, or, or millions of people are watching 10,000 posts about Christmas Hall, Hallmark Christmas movies, which are the furthest thing from porn that you can get without involving the Holocaust. And now you're going to put up something where she's getting groped by her husband. Her target demographic with the Christmas movies is going to lose their shit. I, okay? You know what? My wife is their target target demographic as well, and I bet that she wouldn't think think that there's a problem with this. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll be posting that stuff on. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I said, I think the Blair household was a lot different than the Wollaston household. <laughs> I've said it a billion and one times. Uh, it's let's uh, see. That's, that's a very short and, thing. And this one, okay. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Don't mean I need to be watching it. I mean, I'm sure there's a parody called Boner on 34th Street. All right. Need some shit. Listen. <laughs> Let. So where I was going with this. Yep. Was you posted up something about New Zealand? Yes, I and did. And I don't understand this one. In for the life of me, I don't get it. Uh, let's see here. So New Zealand pulls in porn stars to do PSAs about child porn. Yeah, so we can actually watch this. So we can pull this in. What? We can we can watch this. It's perfect. It's on public access. Tell it's on television. We can watch this. I guarantee <laughs> it's a public service announcement. It's not going to be copywritten. Wait, 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 time out. Just, yeah, just what? Press, pause. press pause for one second. Yeah, I got to pause. Because, okay. Because <laughs> let's, let's be real clear. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that is shown overseas. I've previewed would not this. pass for public telecast here. It, it's okay. I've previewed this. We're fine. <laughs> oh. I'm sure you have. There's, there's oh no twig God. and berries. There's no magic garden shown. There's no none of this. So we're okay. Oh, God. All right. Okay. And, and, Go ahead. Unless you have a problem with a man without a shirt on, we're fine. Which I'm not asking you to take your shirt off. So All we right. should be so, okay. This is from a little bit ago. <laughs> Don't want to know. I want to sleep tonight. And... Listen, what did you just walk into? Something probably totally random, bro. <laughs> so, so this, so, so here's the issue. So before I play this, so New Zealand wants to ed- realizes that that younger and younger audiences of of children are watching pornography online, and parents are not comfortable talking to their children about sex. Okay, now. The United States would do great to take this lesson away, all right? And there is a difference 
between what happens in porn and what happens in real relationships. Okay? You're kidding me, right? <laughs> I'm Just saying. Porn's not real? Porn's not real. It's like wrestling. It's not real. All right. Where were you? Where were you when I was single and the, the pizza delivery girl came and didn't want to sleep with me? I don't I know. I was standing there like, wait, well, this is. The problem is, Mike, that you're supposed to be the delivery man getting a, delivering a big sausage pizza. No, That's the way it that it's supposed to work. So um, anyway, <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what that means. He doesn't have a hairy chest. Well, because what they're saying is a lot of a lot of the male actors shave their chest. But let's give this a shot. Let's see what you think oh, about God. it, and we'll go from there. All right. So here we go. Oh yeah, I'm Sue. Ugh, why does the sound keep cutting out? Hold on, let's try this again. I don't know if the you sound should have downloaded it. Well, this it's is what... Derek. We're here this up online, you know, to watch us. Matt! Matt, darling, there's some people here to see you. So he watches you online? Yeah, you know, on his laptop. iPad, PlayStation. Mm, his phone, your phone. Smart TV projector. Yeah, anyway, we usually perform for adults, but your son's just a kid. He might not know how relationships actually work. We don't even talk about consent, do we? Now we just get straight to it. Yeah, and I'd never act like that in real life. Nah. <laughs> hey, Maddie. You are right? <laughs> Why you gotta be a fat kid? Okay, Sanjo, stay calm. You know what to do here. All right, Maddie. It sounds like it's time to have a talk about the difference between what you see online and real life relationships. No judgment. Many young Kiwis are using porn to learn about sex. Keep it real online. Get help and advice at keepitrealonline.govt.nz. See, so that wasn't bad. Yeah, if it was in the U.S., it'd be then a cop arresting the mom because she knew it and was going to let him keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know. Okay. And, that would never be legal in the U.S. If there, there'd be a busybody neighbor come across, go, hey, do you know you got two naked people on your front porch? I've already called the police. All right. So. <laughs> yes. Good luck sleeping tonight, Colin. <laughs> um. Yeah. My parents used to, I don't know what this one is, but you know, my, my parents used to tell me that and I determined I watched porn while getting down with wife and we role play. Okay. All right. Um and his commercial is gold. Yeah, well, you know, listen, Shaggy is he he's a genius at finding this stuff. I, I don't know why. He's like the idiot savant he's the idiot porn savant of PTR. Congratulations, you got a new title, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I actually found this because another radio show found it. So, oh, okay. But yeah, now we're stealing. Colin, uh, okay. Colin is, of course, we're stealing Colin content. Is the, Colin is the the indictive, in indictive yeah. king. Yeah. Go so, on. Okay. Go, go ahead, go no, on. I, I need I need to go back because I, I, I was going to ask you a question earlier, Mike. And uh, but my microphone was uh, turned off by me, not by okay. Shaggy. Um, so back to um, the song written by McKenna. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, back and, to the beginning of the show. Okay. Yeah. So, and, but what happened? There was a part of the song that cut out. I didn't know if it cut out for everybody or if it just cut out for us. Yeah, I think it was everybody. Okay. But um, so there was anyway. It was it was talking about. Um, Disco fries to horseshoes. And yeah. uh, so McKenna found that and she thought it was perfect. And we were just, tell us about disco fries. Because we've talked about horseshoes before, but I've never heard about disco fries. Okay, disco fries. So New Jersey is unofficially known as the diner capital of the world. And a true diner is open 24 hours a day. Unfortunately, yeah. they're getting to be fewer and fewer of these. And they're, then they're, it, there's no such thing as a chain. Like, there, I, there are a couple of chains that are franchises that try to impersonate diners, but there's, it, it doesn't happen. So the diners typically are where people wind up after last call. And the classic dish to get when you're drunk with your friends at the diner is a giant plate 
of disco fries. And what are disco fries? They are basically just, it's a big plate of French fries with brown gravy, American cheese on top. And they put it under the broiler and heat it up, and it's kind of like, there you go. Now, that one, that's a little different because that's got brown gravy and it looks like mozzarella. That is a variant that you will typically find at fairs and carnivals and what have you because the shredded mozzarella is a lot easier to work with than trying to with the slices of American cheese. Some places will go a little further. They will use the canned cheese Whiz. There are all kinds of little variants, but the main ingre- main thing, French fries with brown gravy. That's okay. so, so Jersey disco fries. Does anyone ever do additional meat? So it's more like this one. Because I see straight lines, so that looks like it's probably yes. that's, regular cheese. Yes, and you or can see that there's got the brown gravy on it. So yeah, that's... That's closer to your. That looks like a homemade attempt at uh, disco fries. Okay. Because there's also so an if, argument if, about if, whether if, the gravy goes on top of the cheese or under the cheese. Right. Okay. Yeah. And for anybody listening, it doesn't. So a horseshoe is something that's uh, regional to Central Illinois. And it's very similar, <clears throat> except instead of just being a generic cheese sauce, it should be closer to a, uh, a Welsh rarebit sauce. And uh, generally has uh, one or two slices of Texas toast under it and some meat. Now, the, the, the most traditional one or like is um, two hamburger patties. If it's one hamburger patty, it's a pony shoe. If it's two, then it's a horseshoe. But um, recently you can get everything from, I, I'm sure somebody's made a lobster one, um, I like corned beef ones, uh, but basically any kind of meat uh, is what you'll find inside there. So I just was curious if anybody has ever, ever tried doing like a hamburger disco fry. Uh, Col- there, that's the one thing so I miss. Colin been... and I used to go to lunch all the time when we worked together, and we would go to the place called Cook uh, Cook's Chili Den, I think is what it was, and they had like several different kinds, and uh, oh, God, it is horrible for you. And there's a reason why we have uh, a number one rated cardiovascular, you know, surgery clinic in <laughs> Springfield. It's because of these damn sandwiches, uh, you know, but because we need it because we clog our arteries with these things. But, uh, you know, ah, so good. So some some disco some diners will do disco fries with. Um, they'll put maybe some bacon in there but typically in jersey true disco fries do not have any large pieces of meat if if you want chicken or beef or something like that you get nachos otherwise disco fries and the idea is there's enough oil and stuff in there that'll help you sober up that's the myth the truth is that the absolute truth is there's so much fat in a plate of disco fries and the gravy and the cheese that if you are going to vomit, this will ensure you're going to vomit. That's that's the reality of it. Yeah. Um, let me see something. So if you're a few if you're a food network uh, watcher, uh, Guy Fieri came to Springfield and went to a place called Charlie Parker's, and that's where you got to see not only the pancake as big as a pizza, but also the horseshoe sandwich featured there. Um, so you, you did so, get to see that. Mad fat guy, a truck driver. Yep. 24-hour diners are, are well, even pre-COVID, they were starting to, to disappear a little bit. Because a lot of, especially around here, a lot of the diners realized that that, that post-last call crowd was not the crowd you wanted hanging out in your diner. No. No, um, God, they were. They all were right, so what's the difference between disco fries and poutine? Very simple. Poutine has fried cheese curds. There are yeah. no cheese curds in disco fries. Which a few shows and, ago. Uh, go ahead. And true. Buffalo chicken horseshoes. 
I I will book my plane ticket right now. <laughs> yes, they, that sounds delicious. Yes, we have those in a it, lot it, of places. Yeah, yeah. That that is. Uh, I was looking it up trying to find. Um, we we uh, talked about a few episodes ago going to the Iowa eighty uh, truck stop, which is the world's largest truck stop. Which was, you know, I know Colin and I talked about it, and it was only like three or four hours away uh, from you. So, yeah, from us. Yeah. So, you know, and once how far away was it, was it from me? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, what is it? The I eighty. All right, let me largest world's largest truck show. There we go. Apparently, I've looked it up before. Oh, Iowa. Yeah, I don't fourteen hours direction. and forty one minutes, roughly. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Any? <laughs> no, that's not gonna happen. I would. I might as well just drive yeah, past it's, you. I it's might on, as well pick you it, up. It is literally on the other side of Illinois. So yeah, that would not be good for you. <laughs> yeah. No, I might. I'm, I might as well that's, pick you up. That's, that's one of those where you would come to Springfield, we would hang out, and then we would all three take a trip to the Iowa eighty, you know, as a side trip. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, in the days before COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I, I looked at I was trying to find okay. out ah, uh, how many ah, calories in a horseshoe and about two to three thousand calories. Yeah. All right, I was just gonna ask, and it came up. I was gonna ask okay, you're a truck you're a truck. Truck driver, do you you must know the I eighty. Yeah. So and yep, yep. That okay. Yeah, it's less than three hours plan away on, from the day are. when they are having a truck show. Oh God. <laughs> I think I think I just felt my nipples get hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, so there's a lot of stuff in McKenna's theme song that I really liked, but I love the fact that she managed to find an actual food connection between New yeah. Jersey and Illinois. Yes. And yep. I promise you guys, if so when the country does get back to normal sometime in the third quarter of 2021, when a vaccine is available, um, we're going to have to, I will come out to you first and we'll do, you guys will have to pick the best horseshoe. You're going to come out to us. Uh, I think you should I'll come out to, to Kim you. first, uh, <laughs> then maybe to us, uh, but definitely, definitely come out to your wife first. Uh, so, <laughs> but no. All right. You guys will have to figure out where the best horseshoe is. You know, an accurate representation. Oh my God, that is a that is the that is that is the 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 argument to end all arguments here. And then, yeah. then you guys will come to Jersey. And I will take you to. We'll do disco fries and figure it all out. Now, uh, uh, don't, 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 do not start putting this stuff out here now because we don't know when this is going to happen. I, I will agree. Their service sucks, though. I will agree on that part. And I don't care. Listen, if the service <laughs> is bad, let's let's okay. talk about let's, let's talk a little bit about about since you brought up the COVID and since we have to do that. Let's talk about a couple of things. One, uh, COVID has, because we haven't talked about it yet this episode. Uh, so the pandemic has changed a few things. One. A few. It, it's it, Yeah, just a couple. Um, it's changed how we shop. I Did you know that? It. Seven ways the pandemic has changed how we shop, according to the New York Times. Number one, we take fewer trips and we actually do shopping lists now. Now, I can tell you for for a fact we never did list before and we probably went to the store every other day at a minimum because it was, Hey, what do you want for dinner? Fine. Stop there on your way home. And we were paying way too much money for groceries. Impulse buys were out the wazoo. It was crazy. So we did lists because we kind of tried to plan out meals. Mm -hmm. Um, but you had that fallback. I, I will say we are a little more careful with our lists. The flip side to this is the impulse buys have gone up because oh. it's like you're it's like the kid 
in the candy store with his entire allowance. You're going <laughs> crazy because you don't know when you're going to get back there. Mm, okay. All right. I can understand that. See, we shop online. Yeah. Whereas you guys have started going back to the store. What well, now? Yeah. Oh, no, now. no. So Kim went back to Walmart for the first time since the whole lockdown happened. She went back this past week and she did pretty good. I'm not going to, I'm going to give her credit. She did not do nearly as bad with impulse buys. I don't even think there were any impulse buys, to be honest with you. If there was, they were small enough that, you know what, you could just write them off. It's when we go to freaking Aldi. Mm. And it's not even the aisle of shame. <laughs> okay. We have figured out their code. All right. The red end caps. Those are limited time. So if you see something interesting, it's not a question of should we? It's a question of yes or no. It's, well, <laughs> maybe I'll like it. No, no. It, slightest bit of interest, red end cap, buy it. Because it won't be here the next time you get there. Mm. Yeah. This makes me mad because the last time I did that, they had fried pickle chip with ranch potato chips. I only bought one bag, and God damn it, those were the best potato chips I had <laughs> in, in 17 well, that's years. That's what I was going to say, Mike. That's the other thing you have to figure out. You have to look at it and say, oh, this is a red end cap. This might be something like, oh, that's pleasant. I might enjoy that. But you look at it and go, am I going to be angry if I never have this again? And if you are, again, then maybe you should it. buy it in the first place. Well, maybe you should just do what so, they do at Walmart. Open the bag while you're there, try one, and then buy three well, more listen, if you like it. Listen, I there's something I got to tell you, okay? So when we're going on this horseshoe expedition, uh huh. if any place has superior fried pickles, I need to know about it. Because uh, I am a fried pickle freak. We have a lot if of them. If we I, go I, somewhere I, I, yeah. and they're... It, it, say you guys want to get an appetizer if there are fried pickles on that menu don't even ask me just that's my pick now do you they're, prefer they're right here the question is because this has come up do you prefer the Go chip ahead. or the spear oh ooh, yeah ah so it depends on <laughs> it takes a special kind of place to be able to do a good fried pickle spear mm-hmm okay that I prefer those. However, that is an exponentially harder dish to make. Do you like fried mushrooms? Mm. Is this an either or thing? Or are you trying to just no, see how and. many fried vegetables you can get on a plate <laughs> uh, that I'll no, eat? No, I just because there's a place that does fried portabellas. They slice the portabellas long. So you got you don't got these little cremini things or buttons. Okay, so you have big portabella stripes. So I got so there there are a couple places by us that do different vegetables that way. I don't I one may actually even do portobellos, but they actually call them portobello fries. Mm, yeah. Okay. Sounds they good. don't call them fried portobello mushrooms. They call them portobello fries because of the way they're cut. Yeah, they look like same thing. They'll do like green bean fries, which I, yep. you, you, I'll fight you if you try and put them on my table. There is a limit to the fried foods I will eat. See, Red Lobster does those. I like those. You, they also do oh, the yeah, fried. Well, okay, fried Illinois. Broccoli. So. Yeah, well. We do everything fried. Fried. Bro fried broccoli? Fried broccoli and cauliflower. Yeah. Well, fried. Oh, that's good. Well, listen, fried cauliflower. Okay, I get it. That's a thing. But fried fried, bro fried broccoli? Bro yeah. What? If, if, if you, you can deep fry it, we do it. If you can, uh, we deep fry yeah, Oreos. Broccoli is very good. You, just have to, you just have to get some of the water cooked out of the broccoli. So it's not waterlogged. And that's some tasty stuff. All right. So we got we got a whole bunch more here. Uh, I, I don't buy – I can't buy candy at Aldi. I can't. I just can't. Mama Blair, for the chips, the pickle chips, uh, 
Spears are called Frickles. Okay. Most places use the same brand. See, now this, now we're getting, to, we're talking to this. See? Use the same brand. That means they're pre-done. That is not up in the game. When nope. Kim and I got married, the place we got married at, we went, we had dinner, and they had a special appetizer. There was fried pickles. What was it? They individually hand-breaded the pickles, Spears, mm-hmm. and we made them. We yep. told them it's not an option on, on the choice for the cocktail hour, but damn it, we want them. Mm-hmm. Now, they did kind of screw us because they did pickle chips instead. was a little upset by that. But <laughs> if they are individually cut and hand-breaded spears, you have now raised the bar, my friend. You are MasterChef certified. You get the black jacket. <laughs> we do. Not this pulling it from a bag and throwing it in a fryer. That is not raising the bar, people. Now, we've, do- we've done those uh, in the air fryer. It also has to do with the temp and age of the oil. I would also say... It has to do with what type of oil it is. Yes. Um, we're talking fried food, and you're, and you're talking about roasted radishes. Uh, we're talking deep frying everything. <laughs> and you going all healthy on us. Ro- roasted mean, radishes no, are Kim, very young. I'm sure they are. I'll take your word for it. Listen, Kim and I went to that- a place Friday for dinner. It's a food truck by us that literally it's called Fatty's Fat Snacks. <laughs> ah, that is the name of the food truck. Fatty's I, Fat Snacks. I think Fatty might be one of my long lost relatives. I like him. The, now, the roasted radishes I saw the hippie chick do on the food network that lives off on the farm. And she said, because uh, they're all hippie chicks. It, is the hippie I'm farm concerned. chick, uh, you know. It, it, who has the husband set up like the movie night out in the barn and all this other crap? I don't know. She's the she, pioneer woman. No, this is the young girl. Uh, country girl food network. Uh, we I don't know what the hell she is. Girl meets farm. I think that's what her name <laughs> is. <laughs> what is yeah. this? What is... <laughs> yeah, we had deep fried oh, butter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but deep girl... fried butter. Girl, girl butter, meets farm. Butter. Deep fried. No, no. I don't care about the girl. How do you deep fry butter? Well, it's How pretty easy. How did that easy. happen? You no. plop it in some no. buttermilk, then in some breading, and you throw that some some buck in the fryer, and then you serve it up a few seconds later and say, here you go. Here's your butter. Butter. How's it not melt? <laughs> well, because you don't fry it for that long. <laughs> and then you find the fattest person you can. You pop that sucker on a stick and you say, here, here's your heart attack. Give me $10. I want. So, okay. <laughs> so fried Oreos and fried Twinkies, you can get them around here. Fried Coke. Deep fried Coca-Cola? Yeah, it's frozen first. Okay. Um, What did you just send me? Yeah, we got recipes for deep fried butter on a stick. Deep Yo, fried butter listen, balls. Got, Kim and I, as one of our wedding gifts, we got a deep fryer. <laughs> that son of a bitch is still in the box upstairs. Kim has <laughs> tried to put it out at every garage sale we have ever had, and I refuse. You want to know why? This is why. The calling of deep fried butter. I did not know it until now. <laughs> but now I know it. Now you have a mission. I uh, have a purpose in life. Deep fried butter tastes like a hot, this. a hot roll with butter. See, it's Fatty's like a mix between Oreos a biscuit and... or a croissant. So there, there, there's one place by us that they do deep fried Oreos, deep fried Twinkies, deep fried Snickers. Uh, deep fried Twix, deep fried Mars bars is a thing. Yeah, that pro- Butterfinger, um, mm-hmm. peanut butter and jelly, which I still don't know how they did that. But oh, that's easy. You make a course, peanut butter jelly sandwich, then you bread it and you dip. You know, uh, yeah, we did that before. Of course, I'm also very. Uh, actually, what I think they did, honestly, I think they took. Um, what, what's that peanut butter and jelly mix? 
stuff or they piped goober. like peanut butter and jelly together. Goober. goober grape. They took like like goober grape and froze it and then breaded it and threw it in. So it was almost like a, a, a chocolate <clears throat> lava cake, how they got the, the frozen briquette in the middle. And and any minute now Ken is gonna start yelling at me like, No, that is it's not a briquette, it's 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 a quick half something doll that's frozen in the middle of the lava cake and she's gonna start correcting me. I'm drunk. All right. How so about slack. how Please. about deep fried beer? No. So I I, I was doing a search deep for deep fried Kool Aid. I did a search for New Jersey deep fried butter, thinking maybe there's somewhere in New Jersey you can get it. Fried salsa. And it, said, it came up and said in 2019 the New Jersey State Fair had deep fried bubble gum. So I yep. gotta say that wouldn't be award for stupidest. Deep fried anything I've ever heard of. Here you go, Mike. Why deep fried, you... deep fried White Castle burger. I wanted to do the White Castle stuffing, and I was told no. Uh, so I don't know why White Castle led me to this one, but have you guys seen the ads for Morningstar Farms' <laughs> new meat substitute? Uh, no, no, because because I don't watch so that kind of. I don't need that kind of negativity. Well, no, it's a it's a commercial and it's just on everywhere. But it's com- <laughs> it, to compete with Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat. They mm-hmm. have come out with what I am desperate to try, just because it's the most brilliant name ever. The their their product is called Incognito. It's genius. It's genius, I tell you. Ugh. Don't. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm not eating. Not what meat. if I deep fried it? No, not eating not meat. <laughs> I'll eat meat. Deep fry me some meat. I'll deep fry it. I'll deep fry all of it. Uh. He now has a mission to get the deep fryer out to figure out what to put in it. <clears throat> John, wait, man, the sausage in the shape of bacon strips. Is it real sausage? Because we, st- this could be a delay thing happening here. I want to make sure you're not talking about like fake meatless sausage. Or, uh, th- Why would you make sausage in the shape of bacon strips? That That's like two competing breakfast foods that should be living in harmony. It's real bacon, okay? Or wait, am I reading this backwards? Is, is it supposed to be bacon in the shape of so- like sausage bacon links? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Real sausage because it's it's super crispy. No, mm, sausage ain't supposed to be crispy. No. I- uh, you know, it, it's kind of like um, like steakum, except it's sausage instead of whatever steakum is. Okay. So I can imagine making a really, really good, uh, interesting. I'm not going to say good. I haven't tried this. Yet. A really interesting, um, like breakfast Philly. Um, I gone blank. What's the Philly sandwich called? Cheese steak. Uh, like Philly, Philly cheese steak. Sandwich. Okay. All right, so Mike, um, let's see here. So, I, I I I'm feeling an urge. I have two stories here that I think we I'm I'm between as far as what I what I feel we have to talk about. Okay. Um, the first one is what possibly is the ultimate bridezilla because I don't remember if we talked about this or not mm-hmm. previously. The other is how cat people are going to inherit the earth. Like people who like cats or people who well, are cats? Okay. So, no, people that like cats. Because apparently somebody took – somebody had the brilliant idea to look at medicines used in the veterinary world. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. hmm Yep. And there is a drug that is used to treat different forms of – coronaviruses in cats right because coronavirus is, is a 
classification of virus. Correct. Yeah. Right? So what they found was this feline drug prevents COVID-19 from reproducing. Does it make you want to pee in a sandbox? Perhaps. But then again, so does natural light. Does it if make... If I drink enough of it. Does it make you want to cough up a hairball? Perhaps, but not since the 80s when I was when it was in vogue for girls to not shave. Does it make you... Like being petted, like being petted, bite the hand that's petting you. What if you did that before? <laughs> okay, so no change. Placebo effect, all right. Um, does it make you not care about the others around you, but merely feel like they're really your servants? Same answer. <laughs> You might have a case of narcissism, and I'm not sure what the cure for that is. So, I okay. So now I got. I, I have to ask this question before I share these comments. Yeah, refresh my memory again. Who is Bugsy? Uh, that's the cat. That's Kenna. Yeah, no we're going to be likes, fighting. No one likes cats. <laughs> well, no, that's no, you have it wrong. Humans into serving them. Let me explain something to you. Okay? That is true. Cats are the ultimate reason. They're the ultimate proof as to why this is not a flat earth. Okay? All you got to do is show a cat to a flat earther, and they realize, nope, no flat earther owns a cat. Why? Because if the earth was flat, cats would have knocked every damn thing off of this earth already. All right? That's what cats do. Yes, now, they do. All right, all cats are Karens. Yeah, well, listen, you just got to know how to deal with the Karens. That's all. I had I had a Karen on a Facebook thread earlier this week. I was like, oh, you can't be mad about this. Oh, really, Karen? Try me. Let me explain it to you. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to deal with the Karens. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> but, so apparently, but, but this is the thing. So all of these medications, like, the FDA has only approved medications like some medications are, are 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 only for veterinary use. Some are for human consumption, and and the 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 conditions they are used to treat are may not correlate. So now, instead of trying to invent a new vaccine, somebody had the sense to go and say. Well, this is in the same family as these diseases in cat. Let's go look at this. There could be a vaccine sitting on somebody's desk right now, but because it's only ever been used in humpback whales, nobody's mm -hmm. looking at it. Yeah, I mean. So to me, this is possibly more genius than the drug companies that are coming up with something. Was yeah. it Occam's razor? The simplest answer is usually the correct one. I mean, you know, take a just take a look at, you know, this person. Don't you think this person is smart and would know the right answer? Don't you think this person ain't going to have COVID? You no. Know? What about this? Don't you think that that knows what it's doing? Obviously. That absolutely knows what it's doing. You know? I think it, I think it knows. It's better than we do. It's getting to, it knows what six feet of distance is. <sighs> All right, so Colin, you sent me a picture of these sausage strips. I, wow, I really I need to tone down these drinks before uh, before the shows because <laughs> I'm I'm more random than usual. You sent me a picture of these Johnsonville sausage strips, and you know what? And looking at them right away, it reminds me of that. Yeah, see, this reminds me too much of sizzling. And I don't know why, but I get what you're saying now. Okay, so it it it's shaped 
and has the texture of bacon, but it tastes like sausage. So, it, okay, I, I get it. I would try it, but I'm not quite sure I'd be, I, I'd be all about it. It'd be one of those novelty things like once in a while. But that oh, but that could be good. You cook that up, chop that up, and throw that in the gravy on disco fries. Might be onto something there. <laughs> that might work. Because oh. the good brown gravy has a little hint of like cinnamon type flavor to it. So the maple in the bacon, it ooh. Ooh, goddamn. Let me check Grubhub real quick and see. Is anybody still delivering? <laughs> what was in that drink there, Mike? That was... Uh, that was a... The problem with drinking the cheaper brands of alcohol on a semi-empty stomach would... A... Would a cat eat the flat sauce? Of course a cat would. Maybe not the maple, because it doesn't like sweet, but one of the other flavors. Oh, really? Yeah, cats can't taste oh, sweet. Gonna... They don't have, the, they don't have uh, taste buds for sweet. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. I did not know that. All right. <clears throat> we, um... All right. I, we have three movies to review. This week. No, we do not have three no, movies three. to review. We don't? We have two movies to review. Okay, what two movies? Ballistica and Valentine's Day. Okay, I thought we were reviewing... No, that the was... other one, That's because we're going on next week... Oh, okay. We pre-picked one... Oh, okay, okay. So that we weren't gotcha. trying to watch two movies in a week. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I gotcha, okay. And what I feel bad that we're an hour and a half into the show, but how you feeling, bro? Fine. Obviously, but uh, good. Okay. I'm feeling good. I I Shaggy, had Shaggy I had didn't a... have, Shaggy didn't have COVID nineteen, but he had no. COVID two. Yeah, so I, it was a little easier to get rid of. I had a very stressful week the week before last. Like like really stressful, like you know, like messed up me internally stressful. Like you know when you, you you get so worked up that you you've twisted your insides up like to the point where you decide you need probiotics uh to to re-regulate yourself you know cuz you're old yeah, who, who who's the oldest one on the show Yeah, I know. It really sucks. Cuz normally we just give probiotics to the dog and so it was kind of funny cuz I went to the doctor and then I called my wife when I got done and she said, well, what'd they say? And I said, well, according to the doctor, I got to stop eating all the shit out in the yard uh, because I need probiotics to re-regulate my system. Because that's what happens to the dogs because they eat all the crap out in the yard. Literally. I got one dog that can't even wait for it to get out of her butt. She's turning around so fast. Wait, I got to eat a hot meal. I got to eat a hot meal. <laughs> Mike. What the hell is wrong with you? But I just, yeah, uh, I've been there. All right. So yeah, so I'm on dog medicine basically. Uh, so it's not just dog medicine, okay? <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis takes hers in yogurt. I know. I it took a few seconds because I I told my wife I'm like we gotta get uh, I gotta get some of that stuff that that. Uh, that gray, hair, silver-haired lady uh, that was in True Lies and NCIS Hawks, and she goes, "Damn it, I know who what her name is." I said, "So do I." That's why I said silver-haired lady and who was in NCIS and True Lies. And I see, I'm thinking, yeah. See, I was thinking, like she was in True Lies and I don't know Halloween. I don't watch horror movies. Freaky Friday. I don't watch chick movies. Liar. You watch. Neither of us put a Valentine's Day on the list. Uh, yep. 
Well, I don't watch. You have an entire hard drive dedicated to Hallmark movies, and don't you dare blame it and, on your wife. And you says, voluntarily watched Fifty Shades of Grey. No, I listened. You to practically 50 Shades. have a mangina. I listened to Fifty Shades of Grey because I wanted to know what it was, what what all the hubbub was about. And listening to the books is a lot better than watching the movies. Mama Blair, so. you didn't. One one out of two ain't bad. Yeah. But let's go let's go ahead with our reviews here. Yeah. Uh so let's start on Ballistica, if that's okay with everyone. Yes, because we go in alphabetical <laughs> order. <laughs> Some days, yes. And uh so I will claim I am the one who put it on the list. Oh, thank God. I was glad it wasn't me. All right, uh, so uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the show, maybe this is your first time listening. So we take two movies from the list of Amazon Prime, Netflix, et cetera, recommendations for what we should watch. You know, given our previous history, they, these are the things that they say, hey, you watched this garbage in the past. Maybe you'd like to watch this garbage as well. Um, it all started off with I watched Cowboys versus Aliens. I got sick, and it said, hey, maybe you'd like to watch Cowboys versus Dinosaurs. And so now... All these years later, we're still doing this, and because uh, we thought, what would happen if uh, Siskel and Ebert gave these things real reviews? So our mission now is to find the few diamonds in the rough for the "Hey, you might be interested in" categories on Netflix, Amazon, and all the other Tubu, Vudu, La La, and all the other streaming services out there for you guys. Uh, so. You know, every once in a while, maybe you'll find something that we review that you think, hey, I want to give that a shot. Other times, it's Ballistica. Uh, so you know, we'll start off with Colin and uh, see what he thought of Ballistica since he put it on the list, and we can all blame him. All right, Colin, go ahead uh, with your uh, your review of Ballistica. Okay, uh, Ballistica is a standard uh, B-level uh, action movie. With um, so imagine uh, your standard um, martial arts um, James Bond kind of takeoff, except with the stupidest martial martial art you will ever see in a movie. You know, um, Jackie Chan many many years ago he did uh, the drunken um, the drunken my favorite one is called it, drunken master. Where he did a uh, a martial art where um, it looked like you were drunk, and apparently it was better if you were drunk. <clears throat> this martial art was martial arts holding guns. Okay, so they like they hold guns. Imagine that these are guns on hands, and then they like punch people with the guns while holding the hands out to either direction, and I, I don't know. What they were smoking, but they must have been smoking a lot of it for the entire um, writing and production of this movie. Because there is no no person, I would have said, on this world who would have looked at this and said, that's a martial art that I'd like to learn. I'd like to learn... Okay. They must have been playing video games. Okay, because part of this martial art is if someone shoots a gun at you, all you have to do is spin around, uh, not very rapidly, just, you know, just kind of just do a quick 360 turn and you won't be hit by the bullets. And every time you fire your guns, turn another 360 degrees to make sure you don't get hit. Um, it, no, that made no sense whatsoever. Um and there was a scene where, because um, there's a there's a bad guy who killed the good guy's family. You're told this off, off in, and there's a whole scene where he's like looking at the swimming pool in his house, imagining his family there, like uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation with Clark looking at the pool and imagining his family. And it's an entire block of time in this in the movie in the middle that just does not make any sense and um, should not have been there. Because 
apparently his family was killed. But that's off off camera. That wasn't shown. And the bad guy apparently was the one responsible for doing that, but that was off camera and not shown. In fact, the bad guy only shows up for the scene where he has a fight. That, that's basically it. He shows up. They have a fight that were that reminded me very much of the fight between Lone Star and Darth Helmet. In not that. Anyway, in uh, Lord Helmet. Is it Lord Helmet? Anyway, in uh, uh, Spaceballs. You know, the scene where he goes, Oh, your Schwartz is not as big as mine. Um, that seems to be very much the dialogue level that was written here in this not a comedy. Um, I, I'll say this actually gets um, a smirk, you know, slightly, I, I, you know, I, this, it is a meh. It is slightly better than a meh because uh, this movie was bad enough that um, you know, I can tell stories to other people about how bad it was and enjoy having that conversation. Okay. Uh, Mike, you want to go next? Go ahead. This movie had zero, zero trivia points on IMDb. Breaking one of our own rules here, and this is never a good sign because nobody cared to pick this movie apart even the least little bit. It's always a good sign when your spy contact is dressed like a just-off-the-jet Russian hooker in Vegas. I'm sitting here looking at Martin Cove. And mind you, I had just binge-watched Cobra Kai seasons one and two. And here he is with his porn stash and his pants pulled up to his damn nipples. And I'm wondering, did he really need the paycheck? Is that is that what's going on here? Because does he got some kind of Bruce Willis type debt going on? And Kata with guns. This is where the title of the movie comes from. Aha! Now it makes sense. It's like Jim Kata or Unagi. The blonde scientist slash assassin slash operative, whatever. She is giving off a dollar store Kate Hudson vibe like nothing. Man, listen. I am pretty convinced that this guy, this main actor, that he financed this all himself and filmed it or or, or directed, did everything and shot most of this at his house with a GoPro just to try and break the mold of being on a soap opera. Look, I'm giving this a meh because this movie, there was nothing good or bad about this pick, really. This was, it was like a typical run of the mill. I think you're generous if you're saying it's B-rated. I I thought it was lower than that, but B-rated was that movie that the WWF guy um, mortgaged his house and filmed it himself. He was the bounty hunter. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. That was a that was a B movie. This was like the wannabe version of that. And it's like the 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 main actor was just trying to expand his resume beyond that soap opera he's been on since 1972. Who Colin, how'd you even find this movie? Like I'm just curious, like, what the heck did you watch that this came up as a recommendation? So it actually came through the recommendation that's right above it in the list, which is the one with um, Harry Potter with guns attached to his hands. So because I added that one to the list, I added this one. Because, you know, guy with hands attached to his uh, gun, uh, guns attached to his hands. Goes to martial arts with guns attached, you know, held in hand. I guess. Okay. All right. That makes sense. All right. Guess it's my turn. Ballistica is told entirely within a closed world. That's why we sympathize with characters who are essentially evil. 
Um, the story is a brilliant conjuring act inviting us to consider the CIA entirely on its own terms. All right. Damien Sloan emerges as a sympathetic and even admirable character during the entire film. This lifelong CIA operative does nothing of which we can disapprove. During the movie, we see not a single civilian victim of uh, the CIA. No women are trapped into prostitution by the opposing force. No lives are wrecked by gambling. No victims of theft, fraud, protection rackets, etc. The story views the CIA from the inside. Uh, that's its secrets, its charm, its spell. In a way, it has a shape of public perception that nobody's ever seen before. The real world is replaced by an authoritarian authoritative patriarchy where power and justice flow from this massive uh, agent that they've put all of their hopes and dreams into. The lesson here, don't ever take sides against Damien Sloan. It is significant that the first shot is inside a dark, shuttered facility. Uh, it's actually the wedding of Damien Sloan's daughter, uh, and uh, on such a Sicilian day uh, that we have to grant him a reasonable request. A uh, man has come to ask for punishment uh, for his daughter's rape. <clears throat> Damien Sloan uh, didn't come to him immediately. Oh, wait, hold on. That is the review for The Godfather, which is nothing of what this movie is. This movie is pure trash. Uh, this movie is beyond horrible. It's one of literally the worst we've ever watched. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Paul Logan was related to Logan Paul or Jake Paul or any of those stupid YouTube brothers and just decided to swap his name to try and get away from their horrible acting. Uh, but couldn't do it, and it's obvious through this. The only one, only one with any acting chops is Robert Davi, and the only acting chops he has is in these Q-rated movies because they are not B-rated movies. All right, this is how far down he has fallen. All right, this movie is horrendous and was difficult to watch. And just when I thought it was over, boom, she didn't die in the car crash. She's still alive. And just when I, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, boom, it's still going. And boom, they set up a sequel. And this, it, 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 if they had the shutoff code somewhere all along, why the hell they need the scientist in the first place? You should have just killed her to begin with. You knew she was bad. And okay, when he's with the guns, with the boom, 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 turn around, is that just Death Blossoms with guns from, you know, The Last Starfighter? Because that's sure what it seemed like. All right. So this movie was bad. So bad, I had problems paying attention through most of it. So any redeeming parts, completely lost. Uh, this is going to get a verp from me. And the only reason it doesn't get worse is because my cell phone was distracting me from how horrible it really was. So it's bad. Don't watch. So um, I, I need to read an IMDb, Paul Logan's biography, which I have to assume he wrote himself. Uh, this is Paul the, Logan. No, he paid yeah. someone because he can't read or write. He's that bad. This is the soap opera guy. As yes. opposed to Logan Paul, <laughs> who's the YouTube schmuck. Yes. Correct. This okay. is the guy who decided to dance with <laughs> guns. Paul Logan, an accomplished martial artist, stuntman, and actor, may be one of the hidden jewels in the treasury of action cinema to not... A close square bracket hit superstar status. Yeah, uh, we, uh, this is why I said he must have written it himself because it's not even in complete English. It has a random square bracket in the middle of it, and it, um, the words themselves don't actually finish off a sentence. Isn't that okay? Um, 
All right, so I'm going to uh, uh, skip over one of these because uh, I'll take issue with it later. Um, director, and what drugs? Yes, it probably does need dog meds or cat meds. Um, it's the hidden loaf of Kung Fu. GoPro, not if you're shooting on the original GoPro. The original GoPro was not that high of a resolution. Or he's got the Chinese knockoff because he say he needs to save money in order to buy the prop guns off a of wish. Uh, and the same thing whole is that lot of, the GoPros to their hands. There's a whole lot of stuff going on here. Um, <laughs> Hispanic lady trying to do a Russian accent. Well, that's kind of like Sean Connery being a Spaniard in Highlander. I mean, you know, it, it, yeah. Can I tell you? Or, uh, or <laughs> I'm a Russian submarine. I'm a Russian submarine captain. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, in camera audio. See, uh, filming with the lights off. I again, you lights learned, off a wish. Learn I mean, when faced with a with a gun. Just keep spinning. Just keep spinning. Yes, if you're a ballerina, you can never be shot. That's what we've learned. That, Just keep doing twirls. All right, so I yeah. think we need to move on to the second film, which legitimately was a big blockbuster movie. So yeah, it was the it was the um, romance um, Valentine's Day movie of its year. All right, so Colin, we again will let you go first. All right, Whoop. just a second. I got my other. Okay, never mind. My fluctuating light levels are annoying. Um, yeah, so Valentine's Day. This was, um, like I said, the Valentine's Day movie of its year. This is not. Um, this was an actual big budget um, movie, and uh, I'm not. It was kind of weird watching it in September. I was watching, going. Why am I watching a Valentine's Day movie in September? But that's not the biggest problem with this movie. The um, biggest problem with this movie is I don't think they knew what they wanted to make a movie about. It's like they came up with 15 different things you can make a Valentine's Day movie about and then realized none of them could make an entire movie. So instead, they just shot all of them um, and then kind of stitched them together and said, okay. There's the movie. Let's make all the poor saps out there taking their uh, girlfriends out for Valentine's Day to watch this movie with it. Yay! Uh, it, it's an interesting mix of um, up-and-coming pop stars who can't act and have never acted since, um, which I won't mention her name because I'm... I've heard that on social media that her fans tend to attack anybody who says that she's not great. So I'll just say that she can't act, whoever she is. Um, and Queen Ashton Kush, Yeah, Queen Latifah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, 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 the cameos in this movie, the, the people doing cameos in the movie were better than the people in the movie. Um, so I'll just say there, there's a wild mix here of a care, you know, okay. So Julia Roberts shows up in this movie, and I think that was the most interesting character in the movie as far as I was concerned. I was like, I wish someone had made a full movie with Julia Roberts at the time as uh, someone in the military and didn't do something wacky like G.I. Jane or anything. Just, just a, you know, relatively, you know, straightforward Julia Roberts military movie. That, that actually sounds like that could have been fun. Instead, we have Julia Roberts, military, on her uh, flight home for a very short visit to her son. Um, uh, oh, I, actually, everything attached to that thing, the Bradley Cooper character and the, the football characters, I think that part of the movie also worked pretty well. Uh, just the main through line um, of... Man trying to get married to the wrong woman, and then turns out that she he should have been going with his best friend the entire time. 
It's boring. Um, but you know, beyond all that, you know, it's a fully done full movie. Um, I will give it a smile, I suppose. Just don't right. expect me to ever watch it again. All righty, and we're gonna go to Mike next. <laughs> As the opening credits for this movie scrolled through, I'm seeing all the star power behind this movie, and I'm suddenly troubled. Why? Because I remember the trailer for this movie. And I distinctly remember a stupid Taylor Swift dancing like a... I, I don't know how to describe her dancing without offending some subsection of this country. So I'm just going to say I, I do remember this. And this was at the time that she was dating Taylor Lautner from Twilight. It was Taylor and Taylor. And unfortunately, they pulled that pun into the movie, making this an Inception level type suckage. I have a feeling I'm going to want to throw up at least once in this movie. And no, I was not drinking while I watched it. Taylor Swift in the elevator. That's official puke moment number one. Then about 22 minutes in, we've got some little people. The puke missiles, we've disarmed them. Stand down. We're at DEFCON 3. We're okay. 43 minutes in, I am finding Anne Hathaway's character to be incredibly intriguing, and it's possibly the Russian accent. 47 minutes in. Football players pulling away from the smashed George Lopez van. Somebody explain to me why an Escalade hybrid has a rumbling exhaust as it pulls away. These are the things I notice. Of course, the poor kid's bouquet gets destroyed. I want to see how this plays out later because suddenly I'm starting to see a pattern. And... Seeing a pattern. There's the kid. He's in the class. With flowers for his teacher. Ashton and Jen are going to hook up an end. Anybody want to bet me a nickel? Bet me a nickel. Come on. I dare you. So the dog picked her. They broke up and the dog picked her. Oh, man, that's cold. That's cold right there, bro. Ashton getting in Lopez's face in Española. And I can so relate to his why didn't you say something to me speech. I had a girlfriend in high school that I was miserable with. And she hit on my cousin. My cousin. And he didn't tell me until a decade later. I could have punched him in the face then because he could have saved me a whole bunch of trouble way back if he had just been honest. There it is. Taylor Swift dancing stupid. I've been pretty quiet for a little while here. And then comes the scene with Jennifer Garner and Jessica Biel in the not Valentine's, the Valentine's Day singles mixer. Now, I'm going to try and be tactful here. But that scene right there, you could have muted that. And that was the... Opening sequence of many a liquored up slumber when I was a single youth back in the day. I'm just saying. I had crushes on both of them at the same time. Uh, I'm going to give this a smirk. And I'll tell you why. This was entertaining to a point. However, this kicked off a horrible trend of trying to do ensemble movies for every freaking holiday out there. I'm sure if you look far enough... There will be a direct-to-video St. Patrick's Day movie that was made. This one, if you take it by itself, it's possibly entertaining. I do like the fact how pretty much all of the stories got intertwined in the end. Like, everything was connected. And that was, that's the thinking man's part that makes me kind of like this movie. But, like I said, 
They, I know they did New Year's Day. I know, I, I'm pretty sure they did a Christmas version. If you look far enough, that's a trend that needed to die with this movie. All right. And then I guess it's my turn. All right. So this was a movie that my wife and I both watched together because I knew she wasn't going to handle Ballistica. So <laughs> this was, all right, we're going to watch this together uh, because maybe you'll like it. So like Mike, credits start rolling. My wife doesn't pay attention to the intro credits. I do, and I kind of saw this ahead. Of, I saw the trailer ahead of time, so I and I kind of, you know, I always research these things ahead of time to know if she's going to like it or not. So, so I'm like, huh, all right, wow, 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 all right. Jessica Alba, Kathy Bates, Jessica Biel, Bradley Cooper, Eric Dane, Patrick Dempsey, Hector Elizondo, Jamie Foxx, Jennifer Garner, Topher Grace, Anne Hathaway, Carter Jenkins, Ashton Kutcher, Queen Latifah, Taylor Lautner, Jen, George Lopez, Shirley MacLaine. Good Lord, Emma Roberts, Julia Roberts. Taylor Swift, Larry Miller. All right, I get it. You have a big bankroll for this movie. All right, understandable. You can hire whoever you want. All right, <laughs> and you decided to hire everyone. All right, we know you couldn't afford Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. We apologize. Your budget wasn't big enough for that. Okay, but... You got everybody else, everybody else, and you went after all the good. So you got the Grey's Anatomy cast. You got the That 70s Show cast. You know, you got the, the Princess Diaries cast. You got, you, basically, you went after shows and said, okay, who has good chemistry within each of their sh representative shows? Let's shove them into one big movie. And let's throw George Lopez in there so that the Hispanics like the movie. And okay, that's what you did. I get it. You did a good job. All right? And I'll tell you what. For all those movies where I have heard, oh, that's Dr. McDreamy. Thank you for making him the dick. All right? Thank you for making him the butthole that everybody's going to make in the movie. All right? That was a saving grace. <coughs> all right? There had to be one. I was glad he was the one. All right. And all right. I'm going to admit you got me with Bradley Cooper. I didn't see it coming. You got me. Congratulations. I didn't see it. Five minutes before it happened, I thought maybe. But you got me. I, I knew Julia Roberts, though. I knew that one halfway into this movie. I got that one done, all right? And Queen Latifah at the end, that was some funny stuff, all right? You needed to do that earlier on in the movie because that was hilarious, all right? And Mike's right. Anne Hathaway with the Russian accent or with the anything else when she was doing the sex tape, you just need to have a whole movie around that character, all right? I need to know more about her and Topher Grace. That could have been a spinoff movie, all right? I'd have been interested in that. The, the whole movie, I thought, was done really well. I, like Mike said, there was a thinking man element at the end to see how would this all come together? How would they all be related? Because I started piecing it together towards the end. And I'm like, ooh, this is this and this and this and this and this. And I actually started telling my wife, I'm like, well, this is going to be this and this is going to be this and this is going to be this. And holy crap, what the hell did they do there with Bradley Cooper? I didn't see that one coming. But I like it. All right. Everybody knew, everybody knew that Jessica Alba, uh, that Jessica Beale wasn't right for, you know, what uh, what wasn't right uh, uh, for what's his name. Everybody knew that, so I'm glad that it come out. All right, this was this was actually a good movie. This one bombed at the theaters though. This one did not make very much money, and the critics hated this movie. So I think overall, our this was one of the ones that we can say, "Hey, listen, we found a diamond in the rough." Now, granted, this wasn't this was an unpolished diamond, all right. This was something when people said, "Oh, that is definitely a precious stone," all right. We're just saying, listen, it's better looking than you think. It's not just a hunk of quartz, 
Okay, this is one that you should definitely pay attention to. So I think if you got a date night move, if you got date night going on, and you know you want something fun to put in there, you should put this on. So I'm going to give this a smile. That's what I'm going to give it. All right. So now we have one movie to pick for next week because we already pre-selected one movie. And the one movie that we pre-selected was The Heavenly Kid. A 19, late 80s, early 90s movie. Uh, it's, uh, it's a comedy. I, you might call it a rom-com, but it's a, it's a comedy. All right, Mike, so what's our numbers? We are 1 to 29. 29. 19. Okay. Thank God. Maybe. <clears throat> I don't well, probably not. Uh, it's on Amazon, Venus and Vegas. Venus okay. and Vegas. This could be um this looks to me like this is going to be an American Pie-ish wannabe type movie. This thing only has five ratings on when, Amazon. When three Vegas buddies five? attempt to s the score of a lifetime, they have to walk a fine line between their girlfriends who want their heads and the mobsters who want them dead. They quickly learn whether it's love or crime. you got to be ready to do the time. Okay, is there a trailer for this? This thing, I'm sorry, this thing has four reviews. Four! four. Yeah, I know, that's why I said I'm seeing I'm checking IMDb. Have, I'm seeing if they have a legitimate trailer and not just a trailer somebody put together. Oh, yep, they have a legitimate trailer. One second. And we'll take a look. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at Venus and Vegas trailer. Everybody check your guns. Check. They are making casino chips in a warehouse by the bus load. I'm talking about one last hit. I'm in. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Nah, I'm messing with you. That's cool. Who's this? This is the proprietor of the establishment that you ripped off last night. Does it get funner than this, boys? Absolutely insane. Absolutely awesome. Get the bomb in the car! Dude! Okay. Okay, so it does have quotes and trivia and stuff in IMDb. So that's I, okay. Um, Mike, uh, check me on this. Did Shaggy say American Pie, or did I hear wrong? I didn't say American Pie. No, that I may have said. Okay. One of the guys is from American Pie. Well, yeah, because that's that's where that came from. Eddie Keen Thompson okay. is from American Pie. He played played. Um, the Stifler. No. The guy who's been, like who, like who, 11 type thing. Yeah, he played, I heard American Pie type thing. That's why I was very confused. Okay. He he played the guy who banged Stifler's mom. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Uh, Paul Finch. Finch. Yeah. And yeah. Donald Faison from uh, Clueless and Scrubs. Yeah, and hey, oh, Joe okay. Rogan. I haven't seen him in anything f fictional since news radio. This was before American Reunion, but after American Pie Three. Okay, so this was we do have uh, we do have some some listener input on Valentine's Day. Um, Yes, compared to Ballistica, it was a goddamn masterpiece. But that's the, Ballistica did not raise that bar very high. No, um, I mean, freaking ants could 
jump over that bar. Um, Saint, okay, so St. Patrick's Day, Labor Day movie starring Johnny Depp. Uh, Johnny <laughs> Depp is getting... He's getting pretty de- pretty desperate at this point. Uh, anything to get his good name back. And uh, Eddie K. Thomas, I believe, was the one who was also in Scorpion. Yes, um, he was. He was the gambler yes. slash psychiatrist. So this 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 may not be too bad. Um, it I got nervous because I saw Vegas, and I'm sorry, I went back to the flashbacks of um, the stripper one. The, the yes. The, the the hooker daycare center, um, <laughs> hooker daycare center. No, it was hookers do a benefit for a cancer kid. It wasn't hooker daycare. Yeah. Uh, takes a, hooker vi- daycare takes a village to raise the kids. Yeah, well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sad part is, you all knew exactly what movie I was talking about. Oh, all right, folks. Well, with that being said, uh, we have reached the end of the show. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Don't forget, check out ptrradio.com as well as all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at Twitch. Uh, you can see all of our shows archived there as well as you can subscribe for the podcast. All that information is on ptrradio.com. Uh, we just got to get all that updated on the website. Uh So we'll be back. Actually, we're planning on being back next week. So you can look for us on the 28th because we missed last week. we got to make it up. So the 28th is when we'll be back. So just a short little seven days from now, we'll be back and we will be making another drink. We'll post it on on our Facebook and all the other social media stuff, what we'll be making. So make sure to get your bar stocked. Mike always loves it when we drink on a weeknight, (laughs) which... The other hosts don't have to drink. I mean, they don't have the body mass that I do to be able to absorb all the alcohol. So, you know, uh, but it's always. Listen, I must. No, I'm going to drink because I must prove my strength. Yes. Um, All right. So we do hope everybody's doing well. Uh, If you're still sheltering in place, if you're still, you know, staying strong, staying at home, working from home, uh, reducing the times that you're out there unprotected don't forget um you know it's actually been proven it's not a lie masks help all right it's there's no there's no there's no doubt about it the earth is round all right uh the sky is blue masks help uh and if you need to know where to get those pay attention to colin and the blair family facebook pages because they can tell you where to get them along with uh butterstown gifts and creations i think i've also got a whole line of masks uh, that they're doing so plenty of places that you can get masks for your company and for yourself so all those uh, wonderful advertising revenues that we get from those locations <laughs> so, <laughs> all right uh, with that said you guys got anything else to add no nope. spay and dogs and, spay, spay and neuter your pets yeah spay and neuter your pets help not control- your husband's help control the pet population (laughs) all right folks (laughs) Uh, that's one of those days so all right thanks and don't forget to tune in next week same bat time same bat channel all right so that's it folks i'm shaggy i'm colin i'm mike the ape man stick a fork in us folks because we are done later